Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for some uh, dismal Disney news, I think. Um, Bob Iger says that AI can help Disney tell better stories. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's going all in on AI, guys. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this because he keeps talking about how the company is creative. Right? They're creative. They've got uh, infinite stories to tell. They've got the most creative people in the industry. And he's like, oh, yeah, the computer can come up with the stories now. Well, I think it's a couple of things. I think, one, it's, it, you can get rid of a lot of people if you're replaced yes. with AI. But we have seen, when we did it as a joke, that AI can write better Star Wars stories than what we've been given. Yeah. So well, there's that. We'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, we did a little, uh, we did a little experiment uh, last year. To see. Gosh, that was a year ago? Yeah, it was last year to see. And this yeah. is AI has come a long way just in the last year, but we did an experiment a year ago to see if the outline for 789 were better if written by an AI than what Kathleen Kennedy and friends came up with. And it actually was. It made a lot more sense. They actually thought more than one movie ahead. Uh, yeah, you know, I know, so right? There's that. But, you know, the problem with AI, too, is the fact that it's going to replace jobs and it's going to be like Wish, I think, where everything was by committee or everything was played so safe that it wasn't good. Oh, I, and, I thought you were talking about like getting Star Wars from Wish. I'm like, we're well, already there. Yeah, we already. No, no, but I mean, it's just like it, the problem is, is if you take people out of it completely, I think that you are losing so much creativity and it goes kind of against what people expect from the Walt Disney Company. But it's Bob Iger who owns vested interests and is on the board of Canva and pushing generative AI. Yeah, so let's uh, let's talk about this because Bob Iger does tend to uh, uh, intermingle his business investments, right? Because he, he did this, like whatever he's he's invested in outside of Disney, he tends to drag Disney into it. And this has happened on multiple occasions, I think. Um, how's that Funko How's that Funko well, Pop uh, thing going? How are the NFTs going there, Bob? I know the NFTs, right? Um, and now, now he's in that generative AI with Canva. So so let's talk about this. Before you get into any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Uh, go out to Indiegogo. If you missed out on Shadowbinders 1 and 2, we're going to do a reprint drive. If you have not secured a copy of 3, which is getting published uh, later this year, uh, you can do that as well. And um, we did this because apparently there were problems with international <laughs> international backers on the uh, the store. But uh, go out to Indiegogo, Shadowbinders, uh, one, two, and three, and uh, tell me what's going on with. Okay, with Bob so Iger. it was Variety has it. Apparently, he was doing a keynote speech at the um, scroll down. I forget what's called. It's a Canva event. It is the uh, Canva Create Showcase. Okay. Okay. And he was the keynote speaker. Now, Bob Iger also has personal investments in this company and is on their board. Uh-huh. So he, it benefits him to push AI. Um, but he was talking to this interview, and he was – I have different quotes from it, but you can go out to the original source on Variety. Okay. So, yeah, he's he's super excited. He is – I can tell like, by he's his He's like, he's almost, he's almost – Giddy. Giddy. He's like, I cannot wait to get rid of more unionized employees. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just, uh, down, so I'll right size the company and then, you know, we'll give them severance and send them packing. That's yeah. So we'll you go down, they're talking about the showcase or whatever. And these are some things. Okay. He was saying, so he leads off with Walt Disney, you know, because when you want to be, you know, excuse something with the Disney thing, you bring up Walt because, right. you know, that's how you, you that, that's when they want to invoke Walt is when right. they want to, uh, you know, support doing so. Yeah. So Walt Disney himself was a big believer in using technology in the early days to tell better stories, which is true. And he thought that technology in the hands of great storyteller was unbelievably powerful. Also true, but it's not just they're not they're using it as telling better stories. But there's also some caveats in there about using it to get data on you to make you buy more shit. But we're getting to that. Right. Um, so he's talking about how there's a lot of anxiety in the creative community these days about generative AI eliminating uh, human labor and content creation. Yes. And make no mistake, I guarantee you that's what he's thinking. There Now, just a side tangent, I did a video on this a couple of days ago. They're already using AI. They were using AI the entire time during the strikes. Well, they 
were using before that because um, when Chapek was there, they were talking about how they were using well, more like algorithms and stuff, but they were collecting data and they mentioned data on people many, many times, not just for the create event, but so that they can use it and they've mentioned it since about all their data and how they can better target yep. so they can get you to spend more money. Yep. So they're trying to use AI not only to create movies and shows and things moving forward, but they want to use AI to try to trick you and just giving them more of your money. Yep. And they, you know, so they're, they make no mistake. This is about making more money. Right? Oh, it's not yeah. about creativity. It's about more money. More so money. he goes down and he's talking some more. And he said, um, don't, I love this quote, don't fixate on its AI ability to be disruptive. Fixate on tech's ability to make us better and tell better stories. Not only better stories, but to reach more people. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, so the one thing Disney always had going for them was the, you know, and, and again, going back to Walt, Walt used technology to tell stories, but the stories came from, well, they came from the Brothers Grimm. And then they went to Disney and <laughs> he filtered them. But they always had good storytellers. They always knew what they wanted to do. And he would use uh, technology to execute that. But now they're talking. They just want the technology to come up with the stories. Yeah, they're going to tell better stories. Better so stories. So when Disney, who was once the gold standard for creativity, now their answer to everything is, but the computers do it. Let yeah. tech do it. And then to those of us who are like, but, you know, we got to stop it. Don't, don't even bother, guys. You're never going to get in the way of it. There isn't a generation of human beings that has ever been able to stand in the way of technological advancement. What, we're, what we try to do is embrace the change that technology has created and use it as the wind behind our backs instead of the wind in our faces. I'm sure he's going to be passing wind behind him as to the people he lets go. <laughs> so they're, they're talking about Canva. And for those of you who don't know, Canva is basically a, uh, an AI-assisted graphic design tool. And, um, you know, so anybody can basically produce, like, very good-looking, uh, you know, graphics and brochures and stuff like that in their browser. And, yeah, he was like, yeah, somebody designed a how-to manual for a fancy espresso maker. That and was white. Did. Oh, his wife did. And he thought it was professionally produced and it came from Canva. So he was like, hot damn, if my wife can do it. Well, how many jobs can I cut? I mean, how, how many much, jobs can I cut? How much yeah. easier can it be for us to do things at Disney? Well, they're already, I mean, and there are tools out there. I'm actually on a website that tracks uh, emerging AI technology, right? And I'm kind of keeping tabs on like all the new stuff coming out. Um, you know, for news, news reasons, but one of the new apps that they're working on right now is basically, uh, text to 3d animation where you can basically generate, have the, the prompts generate a 3d model and then tell that 3d model what to do, how to animate. Right. So pretty soon, um, I even say now people can tell better stories at their, at their house. They're what Disney's We've been putting got out. Disney at home. Yeah, no, we got Disney at home. Better the, Disney at home. The, the truth is, like, Bob, you shouldn't be cheerleading this as much as you are because you are effectively saying that that this technology is going to level the playing field and anybody can make a Disney quality he movie. He doesn't care because by then he's be going to be here. out of there and he's going to make all kinds of money with his investments in this stuff that he's promoting now. Um I like this last part. They're talking about how, you know, oh, people are worried that companies will no longer exist because of this. And then you can read this last quote. Yeah, there's this belief sometimes that adjusting your values is necessary to adjust to the world that has changed. He said, adding he does not subscribe to that belief. Think about what Canva is today and the business you have today because of the values that were imbued in the brand and the company culture years Isn't ago. Isn't it funny he's talking about company values? Company values. And he's destroyed Disney. Go the, ahead. the value creation should be ongoing. Abandoning those core values that got you where you're at is, in my opinion, results in the extinction of brands and companies. Meanwhile, how bad is Disney doing right now? Oh, my God. And a lot of it's because he ever and a lot of the reasons Disney's in a bad position is because of bad choices he made. He ever spent buying Fox. He wanted he done Disney Plus is supposedly. No, no, I'm sorry. Not Disney Plus. All their streaming services are going to be profitable, um, supposedly, at the end of this year, which I doubt highly. There's no way. Yeah. They're not, they're they're losing. They have to merge with other people now to stay to try to stay, you know, competitive. They're losing there. Um, the theme parks are pulling everything up, but they have to nickel and dime the guests. Like, and they have to put like wording in their in their DAS pass that you can't sue them. Yeah. Class action lawsuit them yep. because as they try to screw you more, they're just falling off a cliff. Their stock keeps dropping, and the answer is, hey, let's just AI the shit out of everything, and then you know use it to you know sell people more crap. 
Yeah. And I, I just don't think it's a, I mean, I think AI as a tool is a great thing. I think AI as a replacement is not a great thing. And I make no mistake, if he thinks he can replace people and cut costs and make more profit and make himself more money, he's going to do it. The, the flip side, the flip side is the AI can might, write better. It might have a better, I mean, look. Can you get rid of the agenda people? I, the AI might do a better job coming up with the basic ideas. And they actually have a tool out there. And I was talking about that in the, the video that during during the strikes, there were writers and producers that maybe weren't part of WGA or whatever, but they were using these tools that are designed for Hollywood script writers to come up with dialogue and to help them through story uh, problems, you know, to, to come up with like the next scene or whatever. And I can see Disney doing that, just being like, hey, computer, um, so we want to make another Star Wars movie. Uh, what, what should we do to make the most amount of money? The most amount of money. And that's kind of what we did last year. And this is, again, things have, have just, you know, come so much further since last year. We basically said, like, hypothetically, what could Disney have done to make seven, eight, nine more profitable? And it came up with a more kind of traditional Star Wars outline. I mean, it's a rough outline. You need to flesh it out, change some things. But I could see I could see that being like we're going to feed into the algorithm the things that audiences like the things that audiences are willing to spend money on and in a weird way it might actually make whatever Disney produces more profitable <laughs> because they clearly the people in charge don't know what the fuck to do with all the shit that they acquired they don't know what to do with Pixar they don't know what to do with Marvel they don't know what to do with Star Wars they definitely don't know what to do with the Muppets so maybe Maybe the damn computer can do a better job. And at that point, yeah, if you're Bob Iger, you're like, why do I have humans at all? Because you just complicate things. You just complicate things. You just get in the way. You're, you're a just, speed bump on my path to money. You are a fleshy speed bump <laughs> on, on my path to more money. So there we go. I don't know. We're going to wrap this up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye.